The steps to set up a custom die line or die cut or um, I guess print area for the Roland VersaCam, which is our specialized equipment, is very similar to creating a die line or to create the varnish plate that we talked about. Um, there are slight differences, so if you are interested in kind of experimenting with this and coming to campus, just write the steps down and I can help you when you get here. But first, you must load the Swatch library. So it's the Roland VersaWorks.ai color library. Um, for our class here at Salt Lake Community College, um, I will send out that Swatch library as a course announcement for anyone who's interested. And you can load that in either InDesign or Illustrator. Uh, when you're ready to cut something, you're going to select and add the supplied cut contour color to your swatches panel. It must be the spot color and you can't change it. You can't say that you don't like the the pinky magenta color. It, you just have to use it as is. You're going to do the same steps as you would to create a regular die line by creating a die line layer. And then you'll use the pen tool to create a path identifying where the project will cut using straight lines. You cannot use dash lines or perforation lines because the printer, the, this particular printer, it only cuts so it won't perforate and it won't score. Then move the die line layer to be the topmost layer just because that's good practice. Um, don't use that cut contour spot color anywhere else in your design. Even if you want magenta in your project, use the magenta swatch, not the cut contour swatch. Um, now, you're going to use the separations preview panel just to make sure that your cut contour color is only included where you want to cut something. Notice that I don't say that you should check it to be an overprint because it doesn't have to be an overprint for this particular machine. If you don't use the attributes panel and you don't make your die line an overprint, um, when the machine gets your file, it automatically knows if you set it up right that you want to cut that shape so it makes the pink line disappear and it automatically overprints it over the top of the other colors. And so. It is best practice and I recommend that you just always do it. Make your die line an overprint so you don't have to worry about it, but you don't have to do it for this machine. I would like to know if you do want to come to campus and you want to print something um, and you want to cut it, the Roland VersaCam does not support transparency when you are cutting your die line. And so if you're just printing a poster, we can print on banner material and things like that. Um, you don't have to worry about having transparency. Um, transparency could be a drop shadow creates transparency in your project. But if you want to print a sticker or print and cut a sticker, you cannot have any transparency in the file or else um, when you go to print, your die line will disappear, but it won't recognize that it's supposed to cut that area. To do this or to get around this, you have to flatten your artwork and there's many ways to do that. So you could either create the artwork that has the transparency in another program like Illustrator or in Photoshop. And then if you file place a photograph, your InDesign document that you're creating and setting up the die line in won't have transparency. And so when you export that to the file format required for the VersaCam, which is an EPS or a PDF file, um, it will not say, oh, it, that's got transparency in it. And so you can get kind of circumvent that. You can also flatten your artwork. And we can talk about that later in the semester if you're interested in learning how to create flattened artwork or flattened transparencies in InDesign.